Hey everyone, today we're going to continue our work against the massive view controller problem. I'm sure we've all seen view controllers that implement tons and tons of protocols, which is an obvious sign that your code is doing way too much. So today we'll focus on how we can remove the data source logic out of our view controllers and into their own separate components. And this will help alleviate a lot of the burden from our view controllers and allows us to create data source components that can be reused throughout the rest of our application and can be easily tested. Let's get started. So you can see here that I have a pretty simple view controller so far. I've created an album struct, which will just hold the title. I have an API that will fetch a list of albums. In this case, it's just using some placeholder data. And then in my view controller, I use that service to fetch the list of albums. I set it to our data source, and then I tell the table view to show those results. And I have a very standard implementation here of the UI table view data source. I'm just returning a very simple cell and I'm only setting the text label. So as you might imagine, it looks something like this. So, so far this implementation is pretty simple and straightforward. But what if we want to show the same list in different locations throughout our app? With this approach, we'd have to effectively duplicate this data source implementation everywhere else we intend to show this list. And that's clearly going to be hard to maintain at scale. And we can see that would be violating the single responsibility principle and the don't repeat yourself principle. So regardless of whether we want to use the same data source in other locations in our app, or whether adding this logic to our view controller adds too much responsibility, we'll benefit from extracting this logic out into a custom UI table view data source object. So the first thing we'll need to do is we'll need to create a new class and have it inherit from both NS object and UI table view data source. And now we can bring over our original implementation from the view controller. And the only thing that we'll need to do is we'll need to remove these override calls because we are inheriting from UI table view data source directly. So you can go ahead and copy and paste this implementation. You can see that it just has a means of providing in the list of albums and then it handles what to show in the table view all here. And then that means that we no longer need this implementation as part of our albums list view controller. And for our data source, we can just pass in an instance of our albums list data source. So now all of the logic to format our table view and the cells, all of that is abstracted away into this one component we can reuse wherever we need to. So the final thing that we would need to do here is we can say uh, that our table views data source is our new data source object that we've created. And here we will call data source dot update albums and we'll pass in albums. So now we're, we're fully good to go here. Let's just go ahead and run it and make sure that everything works as expected. As you can see, our table view still looks correct. And now there's one important part of this implementation to call out that a UI table view and a UI collection view only store a weak reference to their data source, which means that it might be freed early. So we'll need to maintain a strong reference, uh, a strong reference to it and uh, provide that reference to the data source property instead. So when we come back to our app, we can see that everything works and it's currently using an external data source. So with this approach, we could have just as easily passed in an offline albums or a favorite albums data source, and our view controller would continue to behave correctly without changing any of its internal code. So it's way more reusable than before. You can imagine that an offline albums list data source might have a different number of sections, or a favorites album list data source might return to a different cell. So all of that can happen without us having to change any of the internal logic in albums list view controller. So now we can swap different components in and out without having to change any of the logic in this function. So it becomes a lot more reusable. So far we've seen how we can create a reusable data source, but these are still pretty simple view controllers. So what would we do if we had a UI table view with multiple sections in it, each showing custom cells? So if you imagine an app like Spotify, we might have a UI table view for showing our favorite songs, our queued songs, and our recommended songs respectively but we might also have a, uh, a UI table view that shows all of the same information as distinct sections inside of one table instead. So typically we would handle this by maybe having a fairly complicated data source and sell for row at function uh, 
that specifies what cell to show in each section. But now with our new approach, we can actually composite UI table view data sources together instead. So I've gone ahead and I've created a few additional data sources that just return hard-coded values. So our offline one just has some uh, hard-coded values, as does our favorites in our recommended albums list data source. And you can see here in our original albums list data source, I've changed it to take all of these other data sources as input into an array. And here in our actual implementation of the required data source functions, I defer to that data source in that position, in that section, to figure out exactly what the number of uh, rows to show are, what the custom cell is to show, all of that I can just defer to the data source object instead to handle. So now not only do we have these individual data sources that can each power their own view controllers, but we can also combine them together to create uh, views with fairly complicated functionality, in this case, a viewer controller with three different sections with very little code. So you can see that now because we're combining these data sources together, we can see all of this information in one view. And if I come down to our albums list view controller, you can see that all I'm really doing is I'm just creating an instance of our data source, our albums list data source, and passing it in to our table view. So we can see that the actual implementation of the table view is really clear. It doesn't know anything about the cells that it's showing or any of this other specifics. It is just abstracted away all of that business logic and it helps reduce the responsibility of our UI table view controller. So if you enjoy this video, uh, please give it a like and, and comment below and consider subscribing. Thanks.